Hello, welcome to everyone. Greetings to everyone. Everyone is slowly joining us bit by bit. Today, we have guests from the Senate Department for Culture. And they're going to going to introduce us to the research scholarships for visual artists and curators. I will wait a few moments before everyone has joined us. And then uh, we'll get started. We have two hours. The first hour is about the program and the application process. And in the second half, we will have time to take your questions that you can ask uh, our colleagues from the Senate Department for Culture. More and more participants are joining us. Welcome, my name is Anne Katrin. I'm one of the counselors here at Creative Kultur Berlin in the Culture Funding Counseling Center. Now, I'm having a signal that we can get going. Welcome once again to everyone to the info session. I am Anne Katrin, one of the counselors here at the team of the Cultural Funding Counseling Center at Creative Kultur Berlin. We have this info session with our guests today uh, from the Senate Department for Culture. And our topic today is the research scholarships for visual artists and curators. Before I introduce our guests, I would like to mention quickly a few information bits about the Kreative Kultur Berlin. How is it going to work today? We have a bilingual event for you today, English language interpretation is available. You can switch to the English channel on the buttons shown on your screen below. If you're participating in German, just stay here in this channel. This is a webinar, a webinar. You know this format. You are able to see the speakers and the presenters. You are uh, all muted, but you can communicate us through the chat in order to enter your questions. You can go to the F and A section or Q and A session in English. The two little, the two little speech bubbles at the bottom, you can click them in order to note your questions that we will be taking later in the session. My colleagues will be listing your questions. We will sort them into the second part of our presentation today and our guests will be able to answer them. Before we begin, once again, a few bits of information about Creative Kultur Berlin. We are your host today. We're a counseling center for people working in the creative and cultural fields. We are working in two different offices. Today is being hosted by the Cultural Counseling, Funding Counseling Center. We are always able to advise you about possibilities for funding for your cultural and creative projects. That's our counseling offer. Our colleagues in the creative business section can counsel you and advise you about the business plans, the business side of your creative projects. We offer seminars and workshops, and you're always invited to take part and see what's on offer. Enough about us. And now I will pass to our guests today. Today, Lillian Engelmann will be presenting and Pauline Koppelmann 
are working at the Senate Department for Culture. They will be presenting the research scholarship program to you today. Visual artists and curators can be applying for the scholarship and the deadline for this scholarship is on 19th of March to this year. So I will pass on now to Julia. Lilian will be beginning, excuse me, Lilian will be starting. Good morning, I'm happy to be presenting this project to you today, the Scholarship for Visual Arts. First of all, what is the point of this? What are the requirements for the scholarship? We're going to look into the info, uh, the info page about this scholarship. Uh, we will look at the information already presented on this page. And in the second uh, section of this presentation, we will look at the application form itself and try to answer all of your questions about it. First of all, um, what scholarships are presented in the field of visual arts? These are working scholarships, research scholarships, scholarships for cultural uh, creative artistic research that are also being presented by the Society for Artistic Research in Germany. On the page of um, the visual artist, I will be now presenting this. My colleague will take over about the funding program for research scholarships on visual arts. Die Bewerberinnen müssen eine künstlerische Ausbildung abgeschlossen haben und oder eine mehrjährige künstlerische Tätigkeit auf dem Gebiet der bildenden Kunst nachweisen können. Ähm, wir fördern verschiedene Sparten ähm, zu einem Arbeiten auf Papier, Zeichnung, Bildhauerei. So, supported areas of the visual arts are works on paper drawing, sculpture, artistic film or video, installation, interdisciplinary art, sound art, urban art, art in urban spaces, artistic photography, painting, digital art, media art and performance. In the it, the main focus of their work must be in the field of the visual arts, especially in the case of interdisciplinary artists. Um, your work always needs to be related to that, especially if you're an interdisciplinary artist. <clears throat> the predominant presentation of the work must be in the exhibition context. This must be clear from the CV. Eligible to apply are individual natural persons, firmly established duos and groups. Um, they have to apply as a GBR. Who is not eligible to apply? Those enrolled at a university at the time of application, also with the aim of obtaining a doctorate. Persons working as professors at a university or persons who do not work predominantly in the field of one of the above mentioned branches of the fine arts. Persons who are not registered as having their main residence. Um, we have a two year ban. So if you have already applied for research stipend um, last time, you has, you're banned for two years from applying. The purpose and scope of the fellowship, the purpose is the promotion of further artistic training for artists or curators and the practical training of curators who live and work in Berlin. Probably approximately 78 grants of 8,000 euros each will be handed out. 
in from September to December 2024. 67 of those go to artists and groups and 12 scholarships go to curators and groups. Oh, uh, a, a question that we are asked often is what projects can receive funding? So possible projects are research or preliminary work on a specific topic. You can work on the development of projects or the development of new and other working techniques. You may want to continue or complete a specific work or work on the mediation, documentation or publication of a work. So now we speak about the double funding, which is another large field of open questions. Combinations with project funding are permitted. All fellowships of the state of Berlin can be combined up to an amount of 24,000 euros per year. The, the working fellowship can be freely combined with other fellowships from domestic and foreign sponsors not named here. The research fellowship cannot be combined with the fellowship from the Stiftung Kunstfonds Bonn for the year 2024. And a combination of the working fellowship with the research fellowship for fine arts of the um, Senate Department for Culture in Europe is generally excluded <coughs> with a working fellowship. An application may be submitted if an application for one of the above scholarships has been submitted, but no scholarship has yet been approved. So scholarships already approved for 2024 must be stated on the application form. And there is an obligation to notify us immediately if further grants from the state of Berlin or the Kunstfonds Bonn are expected or received. Very important is also that the scholarship period of the research fellowship is not postponable. If you receive it but have another scholarship granted already, um, you cannot postpone to make it combinable. This is not possible. Please note, if necessary, please find out in advance of submitting your application whether this support may be offset against transfer benefits. Um, unfortunately, the Senate Department for Culture cannot provide any information or advice on this. Similarly, no legal advice on tax matters is possible. The responsibility for that lies with the tax offices. So we speak about the application checklist. It's very important that the application can only be submitted online. The application form needs a short description of the work project in German. That is important. With a maximum of 1,900 um, characters. All other uploads, please prepare them beforehand in German or English. They, yeah, they, there you can use English, but uh, description, work description um, in the application form must be in German. But your artistic CV with portfolio, etc., can be in English. The uh, CV with portfolio has a maximum of 10 pages um, and 10 megabytes. We need a proof of identity from all applicants and proof of the main residence in Berlin with the concrete registration address. For non-European Union citizens, we additionally need a copy of residence title or certificate of right of residence. We always need this proof of main residence. In the Personalausweis, the identity card, you um, have that on the back side, but if you use a passport, you need to give us the registration certificate, Meldebescheinigung. Um, 
For group applications, we need the GBR contract in case it exists already, or the GBR declaration with the signature of all group members. You find that on the website. We'll get to it later too. Now we continue with the online application, and I hand the mic to Caroline. Hello, my name is Caroline Koppelmann. I'm responsible. I'm going to take you very quickly through the application form. Here you can see on the slide uh, the link. Don't worry if you're looking at the website. Uh, the application is already saved there, so you simply can click there and you will be uh, guided through the application form. Now we are looking at the application form. For those of you who have already applied, there is one uh, new point that is, it's a new application form, you can see that uh, the very user-friendly steps are led, guided on the right side of the screen so that you can always see how you can click through from the beginning and where you are in the process of the application. If you would like to jump ahead to several points or jump back, uh, it's possible here. As in any application form, uh, some things must be filled out before you can move further. Uh, so in, in this case, on this page, you have to click the I have read the information page and I recognize the conditions before you can proceed in the application. Here we have the uh, privacy data privacy declaration that has to be clicked for the privacy conditions. And then you're able to proceed to your required um, information about your person who is applying. Everything with a little asterisk or star has to be filled out. Others are optional. So you have to enter your personal data, your uh, title, name first and last, gender. Further, uh, as we go on down the page, your citizenship, and uh, you may select, don't worry, um, we are connected to the uh, Transparency Data Bank of Berlin. The database uh, also confirms whether you are an actual real person in Berlin verifying your identity. So these infos that you enter here will be confirmed. When you have uh, filled out the entire formula, you get a confirmation PDF so that you know uh, these informations have been correctly entered. For statistical purposes, uh, your background, whether or not you have uh, a migration background, so so-called migration background is being collected here. Don't worry, this has nothing to do with the application uh, requirements. It's only for our statistical purposes. Uh, I am, I have a migration background. I do not have an a migration background or I uh, would prefer not to answer. Those are all options. Here on the next page, this is about uh, whether or not you are a European citizen. You check yes or no. Then you can enter which identification documents you will be providing, whether it's a personal identification card of Germany, uh, a passport, a passport from a different European country, or as we said, your residence permit and passport from another country. Here, if you have digital copies of your personal identification documents, you can load them here from your computer through this 
paperclip symbol, or you can also load uh, telephone saved data in your uh, photo section of your phone. Here we have a QR code that you can scan with your mobile phone and uh, follow the instructions then in order to enter photos of your documents. Follow the steps simply uh, to upload through the saved documents in your device or the photos you're taking with your phones. This will be automatically uploaded and on the screen of your mobile phone you will see that the documents have been uploaded and uh, at that moment the screen filled with the QR code will close and you will see that the upload is complete. At the next page we have uh, the content parts of these identification, the items with the stars or asterisks must be filled out, they are required, so you are adding uh, whether you are an artist or a curator and which section of, of visual arts you are applying in. And the next step will be your CV. You can upload them again from your device through the paper clip symbol or uh, through photos taken with your smartphone. The same steps as before. If you click the cell phone symbol, you will be led through a smartphone upload. Here it's uh, once more repeated, if you have more than 10 pages in your CV, uh, your application will simply be uh, rejected as a formality. Please see that without a cover page, your CV is only 10 pages long. This is the absolute maximum. And also maximum 10 megabytes. Then we are asking if you have received uh, funding within the last three years. You can check yes or no. And then you will be able to proceed to the next step and describe how you would be using the time in the scholarship. How would you be using your funding? Please uh, only have 1,900 or 1,900 characters, including spaces, just to help you get oriented. Uh, we're asking about what is specific and special about your artistic work. Um, why is this point uh, a very important time frame for your proposed work? And uh, what do you intend during the time of your scholarship? And if you have links and uh, passwords to work online, uh, there's a box there to enter it. And finally, you check uh, guaranteeing and assuring that you are, in fact, uh, giving full and true information, um, that all of the, your information that you have entered is correct. One tip, if you have not managed within 60 minutes to fill out this application, uh, if perhaps one piece of your application is missing, you are able to see a button that says abbrechen or uh, interrupt. At the next step, you receive this page that comes up when you push uh, interrupt or abbrechen. And uh, this is a page that gives you the option to, to download or to that you can save. You can do a save of the information you have uh, entered so far. Um, so that you should be able to click um, and it will take you back to the beginning of the application. However, don't worry, all of the information that you have saved so far 
is still saved and you will be able to proceed through from the beginning with all the information you have already already saved. So you click at start, you are at the beginning, but everything that you have filled in so far has already been saved. Here, uh, the next point about the application as a group, a GBR. Here is uh, the declaration for the formal legal organization of a GBR. Here are, uh, here's a PDF of the declaration that you need to fill out before you apply as a GBR. So I take over again, uh, telling you what are the reasons for formal exclusion. We don't hope for you that happens, but this is just a collection of typical reasons for formal rejection of your application. So please make sure that your CV with the portfolio is not longer than 10 pages. If your PDF has an 11th page, even if there's nothing on it, we cannot, it, it's formally rejected. So make sure it's a maximum of 10 pages. <clears throat> Please make sure before you submit it, before you upload that it's only 10 pages. The other important thing is that you're a Berlin artist we need your registration certificate or passport with the address. If your passport doesn't have it or you don't send in a registration certificate, um, we you're formally rejected. Scholarships are meant for individual or groups, but you cannot apply as a Verein or an association or a GMAH. Uh, again, the registration address, if it's not in Berlin, you're formally rejected. For group application, when you're just two people, both have to be registered in, Berlini, uh, in Berlin. <laughs> Sorry. So if one is registered in Berlin and one is not, you're rejected formally. If you're more people, Uh, the majority needs to be registered in Berlin. Um, regarding the field of artistic work, um, if it is not one of the subdivisions eligible to apply, for example, comic or illustration or documentary film, you are rejected formally. If you're a classic documentary filmmaker, this is also excluded. Um, you can apply at the median board or the women film funding for women or trans people. <clears throat> what actually happens after submitting the, what will happen? You receive an automatic confirmation email with your application number. It can take up to 24 hours. Please wait. And if you have any further questions regarding your application, use the application number. The documents will be checked for completeness and eligibility to apply. We will not ask you for further material if you send us wrong files or we won't ask you to correct that so we check your application but we don't ask for any um, corrections if there are mistakes so you have to make sure they're correct the documents are then passed on to the jury And the jury is constituted by curators, artists. We ask all kinds of associations and institutions of the visual arts to um, 
Abstimmung und wir schauen dann, welche Art von Jury könnte sich jetzt diese Abstimmung... Ah, we suggest the jury to the um, scholars from the last year and then we set up the jury. When the jury has met, they do that in summer, they select the scholarship holders. All applicants will be informed by email. The notification is sent after that email, the notification is sent to the scholarship holders by postal mail, which you has to have to sign and give us your bank account details. All information that we have given you now, you also find on the website in German and English. The info sheet is there in English with all information in detail. If you go to Förderung funding and uh, the funding programs for the visual arts, you find uh, an FAQ as well. Um, and then maybe you can check if your question has been um, answered there or you send an email to Julia Flascher or con uh, connect to her by phone. Um, and you can ask her if your question has not been responded to yet. So far about the information. And now we will discuss the questions that you might have. Thank you, Julia and Caroline. We have collected questions already. And so now, uh, if you are listening, in case after this section you already you still have questions, uh, so go ahead. You may enter your questions now in the F and A or Q and A section. Go ahead and enter them now, and we will then look at them together. <laughs> 